Aloha, adopting Bitcoin. How's everybody doing? Are you happy to be here all the way in El Salvador? Come back country. Uh, my name is DJ Valerie B. Love. I'm the host of the Bitcoin for Peace podcast. And I am so excited to introduce our next guest. She is, I, I can't believe I get to introduce her. I'm so excited. She's my very, 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 very favorite Bitcoiner on planet Earth. So you guys are in for such a treat. So there's a, a quote in a song from Whitney Houston. Uh, I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Welcome Samantha DeWall. She's going to be talking about next generation of Bitcoiners. Rock and roll, Samantha. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to see a few familiar faces. And today, I would like to talk to you about who the Generation Bitcoin is, who we are as a generation, and compare it to a little bit to older generations like you guys. And yeah. So, okay, clicker not working. Um, technical difficulties, but I'll just start talking like this. Um, in the, so, my name is Samantha Duval. I'm 12 years old, I go to 7th grade, and I'm half German, half Kiwi, and I'm a proud member of Generation Z. My dad is Generation X, and there's been a lot of differences in both of us growing up. So, in my generation, if I want to go to a place, I open Google Maps on my phone, and I type in the destination, it shows me real-time traffic, and I can even see the quickest route and everything. Back in my dad's day, we, they had to use things like handheld maps. You'd be on a road trip and you'd have to fondle around with maps like this. There'd be tears, you'd lose it easily, and it'd be difficult. And there's definitely a lot more on a map than you actually need, so yeah. Google Maps have definitely improved maps. Um, classrooms is another big thing. Back in my dad's day, he would have to pack his textbooks. He would have to go to classroom to go to the classroom, and then there'd be like a chalkboard where the teachers would write stuff. Um, he'd get paper assi assignments, and he'd write that down. Oh, there we go. Now that works. Um, he'd write down what he thinks and everything. Um, but nowadays, I just use Google Classroom, where my teachers can assign me my homework. I used it during the global pandemic, and it's a lot easier. When it comes to hanging out, it's also a big difference. Back in my dad's day, it would be about gathering at the local arcade or meeting up at a friend's house to watch TV. But nowadays, I just go on an online game, call my friends, and ask, hey, do you guys want to play with me or whatever, since it's a lot more time efficient and it's just a lot easier for us to do, so we can do it from home. Um, another change that ha hasn't happened yet, but has to happen, of course, is having not the fiat money anymore, but more or less having Bitcoin be our everyday usage money. Um, my grandparents were born in 1955, uh, 1955, which makes them part of the boomers generation. My dad and mom were both born on the border of Gen X and the millennials, which makes them part of, uh, which made them, they were born in 1979 and 1982, which makes them part of Gen X and millennials. And I was born in Gen Z, 2011. And yeah, when, it, when technology is seamlessly integrated into my life, I don't even think about it. Social media just exists. Being able to use Google Maps and everything just exists. And I don't have to think about it. But why am I talking about this? It's because we forgot an important generation, which is Generation Bitcoin. Generation Bitcoin, though, is gen it's not about the year you were born in, because Generation Bitcoin works differently. If you were born in 1955, you're automatically a boomer. But with Bitcoin, even if your whole family are Bitcoiners, you're not automatically in Bitcoiner. If your whole family has a religion and you choose to not follow the same religion, that's totally fine. Same with Bitcoin. You can't really call yourself a Bitcoiner just because your whole family 
are Bitcoiners, you have to accept it and use it to be part of Generation Bitcoin. There are plenty of kids my age who are Generation Z or Generation Alpha, but not Generation Bitcoin. Um, parents and grandparents pretty much only know one type of money, which is whatever region they were born in. If you're in Europe, you probably know Euro. If you're in America, you probably know dollars. If you're in England, you probably know pounds. And if you're in Japan, you probably know yen. It's just basically one type of money. But Generation Bitcoin, we seem to think more globally because we are able to compare Bitcoin with traditional finance to be able to see what are the problems of traditional finance and what does Bitcoin solve and stuff. We, Generation Bitcoin, are learning about so many things, such as blockchain, meaning of wallet, I mean, it has so many meanings, and of course, the future fiat, <laughs> death, <laughs> what? And Generation Bitcoin, we just tend to be more open-minded because why should the things, if the way things have always been is kind of broken, then why should they still be that way? We tend to think a little more to, instead of like older generations that have just their trust on the traditional finance. We believe in ourselves, in making a changing world, because we are the future of the world. We are going to be the grown-ups in the future. But now, defying generations by the year you're born isn't a great idea anyways. Someone born in 1980 in the former USSR definitely has a different technological upbringing than someone born at the same time in Northern America or Western Europe. So Generation Bitcoin isn't about the year you are born in, but more or less about growing up with Bitcoin. So everyone, I'd like to ask a favor of you. <laughs> Please look to your left, look to your right. There are plenty of people here who, have, or who are in the same generation as you but they don't think the same as you, they don't look the same as you, and they don't have the same opinions as you. Sure, we all have opinions on core things, like I think we all can agree that Bitcoin is the future of money, but there are plenty of things we don't agree on. Like, um, personally, I like pineapple on pizza. I'm pretty sure some people of you would say, no, pineapple does not belong on pizza. So it's more or less people with diff many different people with different backgrounds and different opinions. If we all come together, we can make amazing inventions like Bitcoin. And since we're all different, I can't just be talking for everyone in Generation Bitcoin. Just like I can't be talking for all the 12 year olds out here, I can't be talking for a certain group of people. So I've decided to, I hope you all know uh, the One Spitten podcast by Daniel Prince. I've decided to ask his kids about what they see of Bitcoin. So the co-host of, uh, of the podcast, uh, Daniel Prince's daughter, Lauren, thinks that, she, that thinks that she finds it hard to learn, but since we're still growing, it makes it a little easier. Bitcoin is a helpful learning tool itself, and it's not just money. She thinks it can be confusing and stressful, but if you apply yourself, it's like you guys probably didn't have that much interest in learning finance as kids. But if we just apply ourselves, it'll work out. And her message to everyone here is to stack your sats. Her brother Sam also thinks that it's hard work as a kid and stressful. And his message to everyone is that you shouldn't think so much about the exchange rates. If Bitcoin is the future money, then why still think so much about exchange rates and the traditional finance since it's gonna be gone? And their older sister, Sophia, thinks Bitcoin is more about being freedom than just money. She thinks it's a way, it's a way that people can express themselves better. And it's a way for people to accept, um, yeah. And she also thinks that when you grow up with Bitcoin, we're definitely going to have the opportunity in the future to basically just have Bitcoin jobs on our resume, which is also going to be really good for the future, and I'm probably going to try and achieve that goal. Daniel himself also later came on the call and gave a message to all his kids. He said that we should hodl because we have more time than everyone else. She, he thinks that grandparents should buy Bitcoin so that when they pass away, they can give it to their grandchildren. Meanwhile, the parents usually have to sell or exchange because the world just doesn't accept it yet. And yet is the important word there. 
I also asked Sam Day, the creator of Satman, why he likes Bitcoin, and he thinks that it brings people together. You can use it wherever you go. It's a global money. It can bring people together, and you don't have to exchange money for other mo traditional money. You can just use Bitcoin any everywhere, and it, it puts aside people's differences. Aside from the Prince family and Sande, I also asked Ella at genbitcoin.org, Generation Bitcoin, for some feedback. And her whole answer is up on the screen since it's so great, but I'm just going to read a bit of it to you. Bitcoin is our tool to think critically, to gain wisdom and insight through first, part principle, through first principles thinking. It empowers us to take back our agency and solve the hard problems. It allows us to act with a long-term mindset, empathy, and inclusion to value cooperation over competition. Bitcoin allows us to be aware and respect our own energy and have hope for a changing future. Bitcoin is a, tall, is a tool that all 8 billion people can use, however they see it best. Bitcoin provides you with control, with the ability to plan for your future, with the ability to direct the purpose of your life. It frees up mental capacity to go do the things that you believe you were meant to do. Because Bitcoin makes us whole financially, emotionally, and mentally. It is how we can be on the right sides of change. And how we can help other people around the world to be on the right side of change that we haven't even met. So let's talk about some differences that older generations have compared to Generation Bitcoin. So a lot of older generations that don't know that much about Bitcoin or just aren't Bitcoiners yet, they usually see Bitcoin as more of a speculative asset that you just, oh, the value is going down, we have to sell this, or oh, I knew it wasn't ever going to work out anyways. But Generation Bitcoin, we see Bitcoin as the foundational technology of our life because it's just always been there. We reflect a bit more on traditional finance and we just hodl, learn a bit more, and hodl. And compared to you guys who are a little older than us, but are Bitcoiners, we still have a lot more to learn about Bitcoin, but for us it's a little easier because we have a path for Bitcoin and a path for fiat. Fiat is a little more to the side so that we can just push it away when we're older and that we can just have our Bitcoin knowledge, but you guys had to unlearn the whole fiat system, learn the Bitcoin system, but then still keep some of the fiat system for silly requirements like taxes that no one wants to do anyways, but please people do your taxes. Um, we don't think so much about exchange rates and stuff, more or less, we think more about the things around Bitcoin. Like if you like maths, we think about the mathematical part of it. If you like climate, we think about the climate part of it. So yeah, um, to wrap this up, you may have heard Bitcoin fixes this, but what does Bitcoin fix? Um, here, I'm just going to list a couple of things that are important to me, but maybe not important to other people. But uh, personal opinions. Um, climate, climate change is a global crisis driven by poor energy production choices. Traditional finance doesn't help it either. But Bitcoin can use on-demand energy, which basically means you can turn it on and off whenever you like. So it doesn't waste energy and it can also use renewable energy. Many nations also struggle with financial freedom. Uh, Bitcoin provides um, limited supply, censorship resistance, money with no inflation, limited supply, enabling individuals to bypass the authoritarian restrictions. And Bitcoin helps us to keep, ex to be not excluded from traditional banking. In traditional banking, in over 72 countries, at least some women can't open a bank account. But Bitcoin is for everyone because Bitcoin doesn't care about your age, your race, your gender. Bitcoin is just for everyone. So thank you all for being here. Um, this was a little rushed, some technical difficulties, but I hope you still enjoyed it. Um, if any of you have any questions, feel free to talk to me. And yeah, I just wanted to quickly shout out as well, Adopting Bitcoin so far. It has been an amazing conference. Thank you all for being here. I hope you have an amazing rest of the conference.